Well hello YouTube and a warm welcome to the new to crypto channel. My name is Ian and as always I'm your host. Now don't forget there are scammers in the comments as always so don't give them any of your financial information or any of that kind of thing um, because uh, it's nothing to do with me. I don't have WhatsApp or Telegram or any of that kind of stuff uh, so please don't follow those links. Simple as that. Uh, but we've got a few things to get through today but first um, I just finished doing a live stream so I thought I'd quickly uh, jump on just to let you know the uh, sort of ins and outs of that live stream essentially. Uh, we were trying to get the Ultraman drop. Um, I clicked on it straight away and I did manage to get the rare but I didn't have gems in my thing. Now I did this on purpose because I did say that I was testing out the situation and last time when I did this with a DeLorean uh, Ultra Rare, uh, it, the gems went through and then I was able to buy it and it was all okay. So this thing happened, I clicked on it, it said yes, would you like to buy it? I said yes, then it said would you like the gems? I said yes, and then what happened was then it went into a little screen, it let me buy the gems, said complete purchase, I said yes, and then it said no. So basically, I bought the gems, but I wasn't able to complete my purchase. So the moral of the story is if you really, really, really want one of these things, then you have to make sure you load up your gems beforehand so that there's no faffing around when it comes to buying the collectible. Because even though it still goes through and allows you to purchase them, it could time out um, on the collectible itself and not allow you to purchase it. Exactly what happened to me. So uh, therefore, bear that in mind if anyway. you really, really want it. I digress. So uh, yeah, that was pretty much the uh, the rundown, I suppose. I'm also going to run down the things that I spoke about in that. So just in case, obviously, it's uh, you know like an hour and a half or an hour or whatever it was, you don't want to sit through the whole thing just trying to pick out bits of information. So I thought I would go over the bits of information plus more that I didn't get to do in the stream. So uh, here we go. Let's move on to the uh, the other monitor then in that case so that we can see. Uh, the first thing is just before the drop happened, uh, the uh, this was this was tweeted. Now it was tweeted. Let me just grab my phone here so I can remember exactly what the uh, the tweet was as well. Um, but the tweet itself said that there are three hundred uh, sorry thirty one thousand eight hundred additions for sale, and then it said how many OMI tokens will burn in twenty four hours. So obviously they're talking about the burns when uh, ten percent of all NFT sales are burned. We'll get back to that in a bit. Uh, but incidentally, uh, this guy here, Jeremy Padower. Uh, he uh, he tweeted out, I predict a big announcement, an increase in drops, and only rapid price increase. Now, was he just messing around? It's possible, but he is actually also part of the team, essentially, for Ecomi. Um, I will get back to that in a few moments' time anyway and go through the uh, the things that I found. But uh, he was in, uh, well, he wasn't in the interview, but Dan and um, uh, oh, the other chap as well, David, or not? I'm not sure if he was in the interview. I don't think he was in the interview, but they were basically talking in an interview and they spoke to uh, somebody and they were saying how Jeremy actually helped them to put the prices for the collectible. So he has been an advisor to them, so maybe he's got some inside information that we don't know about, but who knows? Uh, but let's move on to the next thing, shall we? Because uh, we'll get back to this chap in a moment um, because it's very interesting. Now, uh, this was an AMA that reached yesterday. Uh, I just happened to be uh, floating around the Telegram group and I happened to see this and he was just asking, um, answering questions that people had and it was great because I got to put a couple of questions to him and I'm very excited about these questions. We'll see why in just a second. So, uh, first off, somebody asked about is there going to be a burn soon, blah, blah, blah. And he said, yep, should have more info available soon now. The optimizations, optimizations are almost complete. Probably need to hit a couple more exchanges to open liquidity a bit more too. Coming soon, so no stress on that front. So that means that there is going to be some more exchanges coming very, very soon. So, uh, you know, otherwise he probably wouldn't have put that. He would just put, we need some more liquidity. But the fact that he's put coming soon, so no stress on that front, that is a very good sign, I believe. So let's move on to the next bit. This was me. I said to Reese, I said, do you remember I've been doing videos on this? I'll put the video over there of six ways that you can burn Omi. And we didn't have a clear guaranteed thing. This was just my sort of speculation, speculation of what I'd asked some people in the community. Um, I asked, uh, Reese, can you tell us, does the OMI to Gems OMI go to the Vault Wallet when it's converted? Uh, and the answer was this. Yes, when someone converts their OMI into Gems, it goes into the Vault. So basically that means it doesn't go to the reserve supply, which is absolutely awesome. So it goes to the vault wallet and then those gems are either spent in the store at which point the OMI gets sent to the burn wallet. So essentially you buy your NFT and they get burned completely, which is awesome. So just like the normal process, but gems, uh, OMI to gems. And 
be important in a second. Um, and then, or you use them in the market. So the ownership of that OMI then transfers. And again, we'll talk more about that in a second as well. So basically what he's saying is that if you buy the OMI on the exchange for sure, you then convert that into gems, you then take those gems and you buy an NFT, that means that you will have burnt that entire amount of OMI that you purchased. Okay, so that will be completely gone if you purchase an NFT. Now, obviously, if you just purchase gems, you leave them sitting there, they stay in the vault wallet, that's what happens to it. So, incidentally, um, so as I said to you, it was 31,800 additions, okay? Now, if we take the average price, even if we say we take it at, you know, well, let's just put it this way, because I'm not gonna work out what the millions is. The other day, when we did uh, the DeLoreans, there was 42 million OMI burn, okay? Maybe just slightly more than that, because the price is different depending on people, what they're buying them for. Um, oh, another thing to say about that as well, which is interesting. Um, so, 42 million of the OMI got burnt. Now imagine if every single one of us crypto people went to the exchange, bought 42 million worth of OMI, transferred it to GEMS, and then bought NFTs. That means that this price of OMI on the exchange is going to go big. Without a doubt, we have official confirmation now, official confirmation that that is what happens, which means that if people get behind this and get telling people, because this is going to be awesome, because the next drop that happens, hopefully they'll have the OMI to GEMS. Now imagine if every single one of us, that now it has to be all of us to do it, otherwise it won't work, but if all of us go there and get OMI from the exchange, oh, I know it's a bit annoying to do, but if you get OMI from the exchange, transfer it to GEMS, and then, then do it that way, then yes, that will be absolutely awesome. Now, the, another reason to do it was to circumvent the Apple fees, essentially, because uh, there would be 30% Apple fees that were taken out when you buy it with Fiat. So you buy it with Fiat, 30% is taken away, and then that OMI is then converted. So therefore, you're essentially losing 30% of the OMI when you do it with Apple fees, because they're taking away the money, obviously. So I guess you could say you lose OMI that way, and you also lose the money that you're paying to Apple. However, I've discovered something today, and that is that when I tried to buy 60 gems, it did not cost me 60 pounds. It cost me 54.99. So therefore, they've obviously done something in the App Store or the Apple Store to stop that price being 60 gems at 60 pounds or $60 at 60 pounds or whatever it is. So in my case, I believe it was 54.99 is what it was, or it was 54. I'll, I'll double check on my, my thing afterwards. Um, but I'm pretty, it was around about the 54 pound mark because I was quite shocked um, because I thought, well, I'm buying 60 gems, so why is that? So therefore, they have changed that, it seems, in the store. So hopefully that will change for you as well. But either way, we don't want to use that anymore. Although the good news is that if you, uh, if you do that, then obviously you don't get charged for it. But what will happen is Apple will still get their 30%. Uh, which means that 70, uh, 30 percent of that OMI will still get removed, or, or the price of the OMI. So we would we wouldn't be burning as much. Is what I'm getting at. And also because you're buying with fiat, that whole OMI, although it gets burnt, it gets burnt from the reserve wallet. Because when you buy stuff, it gets taken out of the reserve wallet and then moved to the vault. Whereas if you buy it from the exchange, it comes direct from the exchange that influences that price. That key. That is what is going to make us go to $1 and beyond very, very easily if every single person does that. Whether it's going to happen is another thing, but still it is possible. And we have official confirmation that that is the case. So here we go. Let's move on to the next thing, shall we? Uh, now this one, this is again another bone of contention. This is what a few people asked me. I wasn't sure of. We had to try and find out the official thing. We still don't really know. I'll tell you why now. When you do the MTL, will people have to take their OMI to the exchange to cash out, thereby increasing the circulating supply? That's the question I asked him, nice and clear, so that that way he can answer it. And this is what he came back with. OMI goes in, becomes gems, then becomes OMI again, as people cash out, so it's coming from the same circulating supply. Um, along the way, a lot of the OMI gets burnt as users are buying new NFTs. Well, we, we know about the OMI getting burnt with the new FTs, but the issue is this. If somebody goes in and they buy stuff with gems, yeah, the OMI comes out of the reserve wallet, and then it sits in the vault wallet. Now, if they then, uh, say, I don't know, buy something on the market that transfers to someone, they lose 2.5%. That's fine. That gets burnt. That's awesome. But 
that person at the other end cashes out. So all that's happening is that, that, that gems are getting transferred to that other person. When that other person transfers and cashes out, they cash out into OMI. They have to take that OMI onto the exchange, which now essentially means that we're taking OMI from the burn wallet, which converted into gems. We're then giving the person back them gems. That person is converting it back to OMI which is still coming out of the vault wallet, but it came from the reserve in the first place, remember? And then that is then being taken back to the exchange. So that means that the price of OMI can then start going down again. <laughs> so, so that's not such a good thing. But there is a caveat to that as well, which is awesome, and that is that a lot of people who are going to be using this app are not going to be crypto people, which means that they're not going to want to bother to take their OMI and then take it back to the exchange. What they're going to do instead is they're going to convert it straight into fiat on the app, which means that then that entire process gets burnt, which is awesome. But um, that OMI has to go somewhere. So therefore, it gets burnt when they change it back to fiat. But if they give it back to them as OMI, then it will go back to the exchange. So do bear that in mind when you're thinking about when you're going to cash out as well by you taking your, you know, obviously it's a lot of money. So if you've, you've sold something for 10,000, say you sell it for 10,000 gems, take that equivalent of OMI, you've got to cash it out somewhere. The only place to cash it out, unfortunately, is back on the exchange, which means you'll be putting 10,000 OMI back on the exchange. So just bear that in mind when you're, when you're doing your thing. But, you know, that is what it is, and uh, that's how it is. But hopefully they're going to make a fiat off-ramp very, very soon, so that, that way we can all cash out with fiat and we won't have to worry about that. So, um, so there you go. So that's, uh, that's come to the end of that bit. Now, incidentally, um, somebody asked in my, my chat the other day, um, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't get your name. I forgot to put it in here, but I'll explain it to you now because that little, um, that little bit that he says about actually explains it really clearly. And he said that basically you've got, I've got a fly on my camera for some reason. <laughs> basically, you've got the, the fact is that when you buy, a, when you get something, when you buy, pay with fear is what you do at the moment, your OMI comes out of the reserve wallet, okay? It goes into the vault wallet. Now, uh, it doesn't matter whether you're buying something or not. If you're buying NFT, then that obviously gets burnt, and then 10% goes to buyback. If you don't buy an NFT, but you buy something on the market, um, then or, or sell something on the market, I beg your pardon, then what happens is that OMI gets transferred to the other person. So essentially, you're transferring the OMI. So that doesn't get burned. All that gets burned out of that transaction, essentially, when you when you sell something on the market and someone else buys it. So if you, you buy, I don't know, uh, 60 gems to buy something off of the market, your 60 gems get transferred to the other person. So they don't get burnt there and then get burnt again, etc. All that happens is they just get transferred to them. And then when they buy an NFT, they get burnt. Or if they then cash them out, they get cashed out into OMI, which goes back on the exchange. So therefore, um, you, you, lose, you, you do get 2.5% burnt of the transaction because that would go to OMI. But the gems themselves don't get burnt when somebody buys something. Um, all that happens is they get transferred to the person. So much like you would pay for something with real money, you, know, you want to buy a chocolate bar, you give them a pound, you get the chocolate bar, they keep the pound, is exactly the same thing. But in this case, I would get the chocolate bar, they would get a pound, but minus 2.5% because of the fact that they've paid for the transaction. So, but they still have that OMI or that pound and then they can then take it to a bank and put it in. Well, it's the same sort of process. So it's not like I, I say, okay, I've got a, you know, I've got a thing here, I'm going to burn 10,000 OMI, and then you're going to pay with gems, and you're going to buy gems, and that's going to burn OMI, and that kind of thing. So uh, I think there was some confusion on that, and there was confusion from the start because of the fact that in the white paper it kind of says a little bit different. Yeah, so we now know it does transfer 2.5%, definitely get so. Uh, but I digress. Anyway, so uh, so that's that. And uh, now let's get to uh, to this little thing. This was this was kind of interesting. This was um, I found this on um, on Reddit the other day. Um, I was looking at, uh, at Jeremy because someone in my comments said about the fact that um, you know this guy uh, um, has a big um, uh, like well, what's the word? I don't know what the word is. Um, he, well, he's big, basically. <laughs> he's uh, he's got a big influence, I suppose is the best way to put it. So therefore, I um I, I found this on Reddit, and I thought I'd just go through this with you, so you can see uh, some of the crazy things that people find. Uh, now, this was uh, cross posted by uh, LDN Stoner PS4, and uh, this was about a month ago. So I think some people missed on this. Um, I was looking for the detail. I remember seeing it quite a while ago, but I didn't actually look too much into it because uh, I don't think I was doing the channel at the time, or if I was, I was, I was mainly focused on 
the token itself and not the actual news surrounding it, so to speak. Um, but as you can see here, uh, Jeremy Padua uh, at Akomi is huge um, for these reasons. And basically, he has done his real deep dive research here. But I'm not going to claim this is mine. This isn't my research whatsoever. This is literally, I just copied this off Twitter, uh, not Twitter, off Reddit. So you can see, so if you go to the Reddit post, you can see yourself. So full credits to this guy here or whoever it was who, uh, who also posted it because you can see it's cross-posted um, in different places. So uh, Jeremy Padua for Akomi is huge and this is why. Now, uh, do you remember I said to you that they, they had an interview and in that interview, this is the interview here. If you go to the Reddit post, you'll see it. And that interview with Dan, um, and I believe uh, crypto... I can't remember his name, but anyway, the point is that he was saying that Jeremy helped them out with the prices and all that kind of thing, and he was kind of like an advisor to them. So I guess that now he's kind of become an advisor to them. Uh, he's also very bullish on Omi. You'll see a lot of his tweets, and they're all to do with Omi. Okay, so uh, he was involved with Hot Wheels, uh, with Nickelodeon, with Jack Specific, and Masters of the Universe. Masters of the Universe, my God, I would be amazed if they come out with Masters of the Universe collectibles. I would love just one of them, just for the nostalgia of it. I used to have like hundreds and hundreds of these figures. And like, I remember selling all of them in one go in a bag for like 20 quid or something when I was younger. I got to like the age that you don't want figures anymore. So I took them to a local toy shop and just sold them to them, like a secondhand toy shop, for like 20 pounds. And now some of them are actually worth okay amounts of money, but not a huge amount, not compared to like, you know, the Star Wars and all that kind of thing. Um, but Master of the Universe, when that film came out as well, I absolutely loved it. Um, but he was involved in that and the, the sort of the rebranding of it as well, from what I can gather, and from what this chap says here. Uh, he's also uh, had other things, um, you know, responsible for. Uh, as you can see here, it says, da, 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 I believe I was brought into uh, Comey to help. Um, and then, so let's move down. Uh, now, the reason it's so sort of uh, interesting, essentially, for the Pokemon side of things, uh, is because of the fact that um, after four years of Jack's uh, Pacific, as you can see here, May 2017, the Pokemon Company International announced that it become a strategic investor in Wicked Cool Toys. So that's his, uh, one of his companies. And uh, they granted Wicked Cool Toys the global Pokemon license outside of Asia. So that's absolutely negative, obviously, for the whole Pokemon side of things. And the fact that this guy is constantly tweeting, you saw just before the drop he tweeted about, you know, uh, we've got the possible partnership possibilities here. He's a co-creator and executive producer um, on Sunu, a American-Japanese animated series which premiered on the 23rd. So this guy's really done his research here, as you can see. Uh, this is all the stuff that he's saying here. The connection to Ikomi's head of, uh, yeah, he had a, um, he was um, selling Alfred Kahn's Cabbage Patch dolls uh, when they were created as well. So, you know, they've already got a connection with Alfred Kahn. So, uh, you know, and, and here, look, you can see he tweeted, this was made back in uh, March the 25th. I think people are underestimating the burn of Omi. There were third grossing app in beta and very few licenses dropped limited marketing. The burn will be real. As the tokens disappear, the licenses drop, the awareness, awareness of grows and the tokens burn. So basically, he's, as you can see, how how bullish he is on Omi, essentially. He's always tweeting about it, and he's always uh, thinking. Uh, oh, there we go. It says that this information was brought, uh, brought to the attention by uh, Omi Crypto uh, moderator J.W. John. So there you go. These are the people we need to thank for this information, essentially. Oh, incidentally, as well, we said about the WWE the other day, Mad, uh, mad something or other. They hold the license in Australia. Well, he had something to do with that as well, uh, with the WWE and Mattel as well. So, you know... Um, you know, all these things are possible in coming. The fact that he's sort of working with them, um, you know, you can see all of these details on the thing. Uh, he was he was also uh, there just before Pokemon Go, essentially. The, uh, that was big news. You've got a few videos of him himself. Um, so I'll um, I'll link this in the comments below. I'll link the actual uh, the actual profile itself, um, so you can see. Um, and then that was the actual uh, the thing on Reddit uh, that tells you all about it, essentially. Uh, yeah, I just thought that was kind of interesting and uh, something that in case I don't know who's who's covered it already. And uh, I know I personally haven't covered it, but if you have seen it elsewhere, then uh, obviously now you know who uh, who originally came up with it. So uh, good to credit the people. And uh, uh, incidentally, a few people have been contacting me on Instagram and that kind of thing. Um, I've got Instagram and I've got Twitter. I don't use them that much. Um, and sometimes when you Instagram, just like Facebook, it goes into like a, a spam folder. So make sure you leave me a comment below. 
um, and let me know if uh, you know if you've got any uh, if you're trying to contact me and you can't get hold of me or something. Always send me an email if you like any of that kind of stuff. Uh, and if you've got any like little leaks or anything like that, then please feel free to send them to me. Sometimes I miss these things myself um, because you know I'm sleeping, <laughs> or uh, or sometimes you know I just I don't get a chance to get on the Twitter and all that sort of stuff, or I'm researching another thing for another video or something. So uh, so yeah, if you've got anything that you uh, you know you think the community will be interested in. Uh, then do give me a shout and let me know and obviously I'll give you credit in the, the video for it and everything and it all helps to let the know uh, the community know what's going on and all that kind of stuff. So uh, you know, all the exciting stuff. Um, I've been getting a lot of comments in the bottom here uh, for um, a Tesla safe. Um, I, I don't know why, but all of a sudden uh, they asked me to review Tesla safe and then after that I got like hundreds and hundreds of comments from different people and they were coming into the spam folder and they were coming into the bottom of the thing and uh, and it was just all about review Tesla safe. So I'm guessing there's some kind of, you know, big uh, big thing that they're trying to do at the moment, trying to drive uh, traffic towards them all. Um, but I, to be honest, it's not really my type of thing. Um, I looked at it a little bit. It's basically exactly the same as SafeMoon, but with SafeMoon where you get 10% taken away, Tesla safe you get like 40% taken away. Incidentally, there's also a safe Tesla as well so and that's a completely different coin one thing i will say about these hype coins um like they could be a scam so i'm not going to say whether this is or isn't a scam i don't know for definite I haven't looked into it in a big way so it's up to you whether you take that risk uh with safe moon i phone moon in purely because of the fact that someone said about it in the comments and i thought you know what i'll just do it as a community project and we made a little bit of money from it but and we're still holding some at the moment but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna go crazy over it uh, with Omi, they've actually got something behind it, whereas a lot of these hype coins, they just seem to have the hype of the hype, and that's it, and that's what drives up the price. So, you know, there's a, there's a few coins like this. Uh, we just had Refinable, the uh, the disaster of Refinable, just recently. Um, and, you know, everyone said that it's possibly a scam. I don't know if it is a scam. I'm a big fan of Mr. Beast. I hope he comes out and does a video about it sometime, or at least announces something about it, because he was supposed to be backing it, and they said Binance were backing it, and... It seemed like it was going to be a really good token to get in on, but just for those of you who didn't know, there was a, there was two sort of releases of it, and the first one was on a bit where you needed to be whitelisted in order to be able to get it, and then the second one was on Pancake Swap, and with Pancake Swap, I guess when you start swapping, it's a bit like Womi when it went on the uh, thing if the liquidity wasn't there or if something happened, and apparently it was something to do with bots or something driving the price up. Well, basically a lot of people got in at like nine dollars, and then this thing literally just plummeted down. Uh, so uh, I was I was I was trying to get in, and then I decided that actually I was going to wait and just see what happened because these things are notorious for going up and then either staying up there or literally plummeting. And unfortunately, that is what happened. And essentially, it's what happened with Womi if you think about it. But that was more to do with liquidity. So, and I don't think that uh, that refinable is a scam at all. I think it was just unfortunate that it happened like that. And exactly the same as Womi. I don't believe Womi was a scam. I don't think there was anything like, untoward going on. I think it was literally just a case that there wasn't the liquidity there. So it all got pushed up to a high price. Now, luckily, it didn't get pushed up to like 9 or $10 and then all the way back down again. But, you know, it still did get pushed up to like $0.06. Cents, and some people bought in at like $0.06. Cents. But I'm confident that, uh, you know, you're going you're gonna to go back up at some point anyway. Or we're going to go back up. We're and back up and um, I'm going to put this title as like a not as a clickbait title but it's something that I really believe and that is that if we really do buy all of our NFTs with Omi to Gems conversion then we can push this to like a dollar and beyond easily um, because of the amount that we can take off the exchange and just get burnt straight away uh, but that's just my feelings on the subject as always do not take this as financial advice in any way shape or form if you want to invest in the safe moons and the tesla safes and the safe teslas and the, the moon tokens and the pirate tokens and the, the poo coins and the um, all the others then you know please do <laughs> if you don't want to then don't as simple as that because i'm not going to tell you what to invest in because it's not my lookout if you want to lose your money doing those uh, or if you're willing to lose your money on those, then then great. But obviously, you can make some gains as well because anything is possible in crypto. Uh, but as I always say, um, oh, actually, there is one last thing, and that is that um, somebody contacted me uh, through Instagram, and they said about a coin. I'm going to look into it, but I'm going to mention it now just in case anyone's got any thoughts about it down down in the thing. It's T I T S is the coin. So yeah, it doesn't doesn't spell anything great to say on YouTube, but it's all to do with breast cancer awareness and it's it's the only coin designed apparently to fight breast cancer. So therefore it might be something worth looking into. I'll have a little deep dive into it 
Uh, I'm not saying necessarily for the, the aspect of making money from it. I'm saying purely because of the charity aspect. Um, but I'll have a little looky into it, and I'll see uh, something that, uh, you know, true thing or, well, who knows? Who knows with these coins ever? But if anyone else has had experience of this one, then, uh, you know, do put in a comment down below. Uh, just the same with any of the other ones, if you want me to look at and all that kind of thing, then I'll happily look into them. But like I said, in most of these, I'm not investing. Uh, I'm just literally looking to see is something, you know, the basics of it. But uh, a lot of these hype coins especially are the same at the moment. They're all doing the same sort of thing, which is to take some away when you buy it or when you sell it or when you move it or all that kind of thing. So you essentially, if you get to hold it for longer, then you will be rewarded by extra coins. Uh, but bear in mind that they put these up millions and millions and millions of coins so that that way, or billions even, that that way when you buy it, it seems like you're, buy, you're, you're getting millions, like a millionaire if it goes to a dollar. Well, obviously, it's never going to go to a dollar because... No, it's not really that possible, um, but uh, they do it that way so that it seems like you can and you want to buy into them. So, so do bear that in mind when you're thinking about buying into these things. Um, but, you know, as always, as I said, not investment advice, so please don't take it as so. And, uh, yes, what do I know? Bye-bye for now. See you on the next video.